Travels of Marco Polo, Chapter 34, of the City of Samarkand, and the Miraculous Column in the Church of St. John the Baptist. Samarkand is a noble city adorned with beautiful gardens and surrounded by a plain in which are produced all fruits that man can desire. The inhabitants, who are partly Christians and partly Mahometans, are subject to a nephew of the Great Khan, with whom, however, he is not upon amicable terms. On the contrary, there is perpetual strife and frequent wars between them. The city lies towards the northeast. A miracle is said to have taken place under the following circumstances. Not long ago, a prince named Jagatai, who was a brother, actually uncle, to the reigning Great Khan, became a convert to Christianity. This greatly delighted the Christian inhabitants of the place, who, under the favor and protection of the prince, proceeded to build a church and dedicated it to St. John the Baptist. It was so constructed that all the weight of the roof, being circular, should rest upon a column in the center. Beneath this, as a base, they fixed a square stone, which, with the permission of the prince, they had taken from a temple belonging to the Mahometans, who dared not prevent them from doing so. But upon the death of Chagatai, the son who succeeded him, showing no disposition to become a Christian, the Muslims had influence enough to obtain from him an order that their opponents should restore the stone to them. Although the latter offered to pay them a compensation in money, the Muslims refused to listen to the proposal because they hoped that its removal would cause the church to tumble down. In this difficulty, the afflicted Christians had no other resource than with tears and humility to recommend themselves to the protection of the glorious St. John the Baptist. When the day arrived on which they were to make restoration of the stone, it came to pass that through the intercession of the saint, the pillar raised itself from its base to the height of three palms in order to facilitate the removal of the stone, and in that situation, without any kind of support, it remains to the present day. Enough being said of this, we shall now proceed to the province of Karkan. Yarkan. Chapter 35 of the province of Karkan and the inhabitants of which are troubled with goiters. Departing thence, you enter the province of Karkan, which extends to a distance of five days' journey. Its inhabitants, for the most part, Mahometans, with some Nestorian Christians, are subjects of the Great Khan. The provisions are here in abundance, as is also cotton. The people are expert artisans. They are, in general, afflicted with swellings in the legs as well as tumors in the throat resulting from the water they drink. In this country, there is nothing further that is worthy of note. Chapter 36 of the City of Khotan. Following a course between northeast and east, you come to the province of Khotan, the extent of which is eight days' journey. It is under the dominion of the Great Khan, and the people are Mahometans. It contains many cities and fortified places, but the principal city, and the one that gives its name to the province, is Khotan. Everything necessary for human life is here in the greatest plenty. It likewise yields cotton, flax, hemp, grain, wine, and other articles. The inhabitants cultivate farms and vineyards, and they have numerous gardens. They support themselves also by trade and manufactures. They support themselves also by trade and manufactures, but they are not good soldiers. We shall now speak of a province named Payan. Chapter 37 of the province of Payan, the Chalcedony, and the Jasper found in its river, and a peculiar custom with regard to marriages. Payan, Pem, is a province of five days' journey in extent and is in the direction of east-northeast. It is under the dominion of the Great Khan and contains many cities and strong places, the principal one of which is likewise named Payan. Through this flows a river, and in its bed are found many of those stones called Chasadami and Jasper, varieties of Chinese jade. All kinds of provision are obtained here. Cotton also is produced in this country. The inhabitants live by manufacture and trade. They have this custom that if a married man goes a distance from home to be absent twenty days, his wife has a right, if she is inclined, to take another husband, and the man, on the same principle, marry wherever they happen to reside. All the before-mentioned provinces, that is to say, Kashgar, Khotan, Payan, and as far as the desert of Lop, are within the limits of Turkestan. Next follows the province of Charchan. Chapter 38 of the province of Charchan. Charchan is also a province of Turkestan lying in an east-northeast direction. In former times, it was flourishing and productive, but it has been laid waste to by the Tartars. The people are Mahometans. Its chief city is likewise named Charchan. Through this province run several large streams in which Chalcedony and Jasper are also found. These are carried to Cathay for sale, and such is their abundance that they form an important article of commerce. The area from Payne to this district, as well as throughout its whole extent, is all sand, and the water is, for the most part, bitter and unpalatable, although in a few places sweet and good. If a hostile army of Tartars passes through these places, the inhabitants are plundered of their goods, and if a friendly one, their cattle are killed and devoured. For this reason, when they become aware of the approach of any body of troops, they flee with their families and cattle into the sandy desert, going a distance of two days' journey towards some spot where they can find fresh water, and by that means, survive. From the same fear, when they collect their harvest, they deposit the grain in caverns among the sands, taking monthly from the stores as much as may be needed. Nor can any person besides themselves 
find the places they used for this purpose, because their footprints are soon effaced by the wind. Upon leaving Charchan, the road runs for five days over sands, where the water is generally, but not in all places, bad. Nothing else occurs here that is worthy of remark. At the end of these five days, you arrive at the city of Lop on the borders of the Great Desert.